Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys, I'm going to be profiling for you a very awesome and cool deck that I have been working on since, I guess you could say January, uh, just pretty much waiting for a new ban, ban list to happen, but this deck is very solid. Um, I pretty much one day woke up and said, you know what, I want to build a Silent Swordsman deck. So what did I do? I built a Silent Swordsman deck. So this is a very fun deck. Uh, it pretty much uses masked heroes and good generic warrior support, warrior support. So things like, you know, warrior returning alive and some other things we'll talk about. It's a deck that if you just looked at it on paper, you would say, how does this deck work? And whatnot. But I'm going to show you how it works and how the deck functions. Optimally, you want to get a masked hero dark lore out in the field if able to do this. So an optimal field, like the best field you can get is a dark law and a uh, silent swordsman level 7 on the field at the same time. So, yep, without further ado, let us get started. So first off, we run our three silent swordsmen. Uh, this card came out of... Uh, I forget, but it came out like late, uh, early last fall, late summer. Um, it's a very solid, good card. It, when I saw this card, I was like, I want to build a deck around it, but I didn't know what to build it, the deck around at the time. But let me read you the effect. Can't be normal summon slash set. Must be special summoned from your hand by tributing one warrior type monster. And can't be special summoned by other ways. Once per turn during either standby phase, this card gains 500 attack. Once per turn during either player's turn, when a spell card is activated, you can negate that activation. If this card is destroyed by battle or by its owner's car, uh, control, it's destroyed by an opponent's card effect. So while it's in my control and is destroyed by an opponent's card effect. Um, you can special summon one sound swordsman monster from your hand or deck except silent swordsman ignoring it, ignoring the summoning condition so in layman's terms what that means is once per turn i can only special summon this by tributing off a warrior on the field so i can normal summon tribute off special summon out silent swordsman number two once per turn during either either player's turn i can negate one spell card number three if this card leaves the field in any way I get a Silent Swordsman level 7 out from my hand or deck. Pretty much that's what you need to know. If they Wigeki it and it goes to the graveyard, I get a Silent Swordsman. Whichever, they pop it through Dark Destroyer or whatever, I get a Silent Swordsman level 7 out on the field. So it's, it's a floater in a way. And the fact that each per turn I can gain 500 attack does play a part. So on my turn when I summon it, it's going to be a 1000 attack. During the end of my turn, it gains 500. If it lives past my opponent's turn, it's at 2,000. If it comes back to me, and I, you know, it's already at 2,000 when it comes back to me. So each turn, literally, it gains 500. And believe me, I've seen it get upwards of 35, 40,000 before. It can get really big on its own. And uh, it can be really costly because your opponent has to waste valuable spell cards to get around it. But this is the main deck part of the deck that makes it function. Then let's talk about some of the other Silent Swordsman candidates. Silent Swordsman level 3 and Silent Swordsman level 5. Now, you may say, why the heck are you running Silent Swordsman level 3, Seto? That doesn't really help anything. You know, you can tribute them off to bring out Silent Swordsman level 5. Then once Silent Swordsman level 5 gets his effect, you can go into level 7. Okay, that's cool. The old-fashioned way of doing it, I guess you could say. But really, this can help bring out this. That's why. Because you can go, I'll show you some tricks later, but you can go Marauding Captain, bring this out, tribute this off, have this out, and this pretty much just helps you go into this if you need to. And if this is dead, you can recycle this back into your hand and go into this. So, say you got a bad hand and you're just stalling out on this, you can stall out with this, bring out this 23 beater, and then you can work your way up to level 7 that way. So there's different ways you can do it. But I do like these two. They do have a, pur a purpose in the deck. And you'll understand more later. Once you play the deck, you understand why I put these two in. Pretty much. Is what I'm saying. Because this can be searched out from the deck. 
It's because if you don't have a warrior in your hand, you can be like, okay, I searched this out because I already had this in hand. Tribute this off, bring this out. Pretty much. So, yep. Next, we got two Silent Swords on level 7. It does brick in the deck, but you will go through two very often in the deck. Your opponent will usually get round one of them, and then you bring out another one, and that'll be the game closer. Uh, you don't need to run it as a three of. Two of is the mainstay of the deck. I don't like running two, but it's necessary, and you'll find yourself going for two fairly often. Pretty much, when this card's in the field, no spell cards can be activated. And all any spell cards on the field already, field spells, whatever, they lose their spell effects. So, very powerful card. Then we run one Silent Paladin. This card is a recycler. I, I like her as a one-up in the deck. Uh, more than one of, yeah, not so much. So what does she do? Uh, she says, when this card is normal summoned, you can add one Silent Swordsman level three or Silent Magician level four from your deck to your hand. So sometimes you can bring the search, bring, summon her, bring this out to your hand. So you're, it's kind of like a Rhoda in a way. So it's kind of nice in that aspect. Uh, from your deck to your hand. To your hand. During either player's turn, when a spell card is activated that targets exactly one monster you control and no other cards, you can negate the activation, which sometimes happens, but not that much in today's game. Uh, this effect can only be used once per turn. Uh, if this card is destroyed by battle or is sent from my side of the field, so the player's side of the field, to and by an opponent's card effect, you can target one light level monster in your graveyard add it to your hand. That's the main reason I want her. She's a searcher and if she's destroyed I can add a light level monster from my graveyard to my hand. I can recycle you, which is the main thing. I can recycle you if I really need to, which I usually don't. If I need to go for a third one. But mainly you're going to recycle him or him. Usually. So level 3 or just regular silent swordsman. So she's good as a one of the deck. More than one of it is a no-go. She is a light attribute. She can get over things even though she has 500 attack because we do run honest in the deck. And she's a rank four. So you can make rank four plays with her. So she has versatility. Next, we're, let's go into the hero engine. We have three Shadow Mist. Staple for pretty much any hero deck at the moment because Stratos is banned. So three elemental hero Shadow Mist. We have your one Neos Alias. So you can go into... Uh, Koga, and then your one Bubble Man, so you can go into Acid. Uh, Bubble Man helps with rank 4 fodder. Neos is a beat stick and can help you go into rank 4 fodder as well. Shadow Mist searches out your masked hero stuff, so that's nice and everything. Plus, it can be a plus, so what you can do sometimes if you have dead cards in your hand, these guys can bring out the all star of the deck, this guy, Silent Swordsman, and then when he's destroyed or whatever, you can go into this guy. So you can be like, okay, well, you know, bring out Shadow Mist. Okay, cool. Even though I don't have a Goblin Burg or any way to get his effect off the search. Mass Change. Tribute him off. He goes to the graveyard. You get your search. You bring out this guy. If he got destroyed for some measure, uh, whatever the case may be, you bring out this guy. Cool. So that's how that works, really. You have three shot. This is your hero engine right here, pretty much. Your two, your, your Koga, your... Um, your Acid, your Dark Law, um, or what's the other one called? Uh, Anki, pretty much. Uh, you can use with Shadow Mist to get over bigger problems. And also, the, the, your rank four, another part of your rank four engine of the deck. And you may ask yourself, Seto, does this deck work in link format? Yes. It usually just needs to go for one extra deck monster, either a, a, you know one of these guys usually you'll go for, maybe a rank four if you need to get out of a sticky situation, like a Castell or a Utopia. But mainly, it's a main deck focused deck. So it'll be fine in Link's summoning format. You just can't go bleh, 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 like explode on the field like a crazy man, pretty much is what I'm saying. But it does function well. Next is a card you're going to be questioning my sanity three Marauding Captain and double Goblinburg. So Seto, you'll be like, Seto, you lost your, rock, your rocker. You should run three Goblinburg, and why the hell are you running Marauding Captain? <laughs> There's a reason to my madness. You should know that by now. So, Marauding Captain. Old school card. You used to do the Marauding Captain lock when you had two Marauding Captains on the field. Your opponent can't attack either or. It's kind of like a soft lock nowadays because you can break it. But, Marauding Captain is better than Goblinburg in this deck. This deck. And you're going to ask me, why is that, Seto? In, in what way is that? Okay, let me show you a play here with Marauding Captain. So, say... 
I open up with these three cards right here. Okay? So I open up with Marani Captain, Shadow Mist, and Silent Swordsman. All right? Cool. You can do the same play with Goblin Bird, but I'll explain why Marani Captain's a little bit better than Goblin Bird in a second. So I can go Marani Captain, Normal Summon, Special Summon out Dark Wall. All right? Uh, I get my search for my mass change, right? Okay. Cool. Add that to my hand. I can set it so I can make a dark wall on my opponent's turn and get the search off. I'm going to tribute off my marauding captain to special out my silent swordsman. Set whatever back row I have or whatever plays I have. So now I'm going to have one negation with a spell card, with a spell monster, so they can't activate a spell. I'm going to have a dark wall on the field. And whatever traps I have in the back row is great. So that's pretty good. But the reason we run the three Marauding Captain instead of the triple Goblinburg is for one main reason right here. And that is because Marauding Captain can protect your Silent Swordsman. So what I mean by that is you can go Marauding Captain, Marauding Captain, Silent Swordsman level three. Tribute off Silent Swordsman level 3, special summon this out. He'll have low attack, right? He's only going to have 1,000, you know, 1,500 attack on your opponent's turn. That can easily be run over. But they have to go through the Marauding Captain to get to Silent Swordsman if they're trying to destroy him by battle, which is the normal thing you would do for low level attack monsters. So because Marauding Captain states you, can, you have to attack this warrior before you attack any other warriors on the field, means you have to go through the Marauding Captain before you can go to this. Goblinburg, yes, is a rank 4 engine for the deck, but this thing can protect your Silent Swordsman, which is nice, and is can be a, a semi-lock, and also, even if you're not even using the Silent Swordsman, you can be like, Marauding Captain, okay, spring out, Shadow Mist, you know, special summon, you get your search with your mass change, and if they're trying to run over the Dark Wall, which is 24 attack, and you know there's things that can get over 24 attack, they have to go through Marauding Captain first by battle before they can get to Dark Wall. Because I can't tell how many times I've seen when I play Masked Heroes, people just try to run Dark Wall over with some other means or they'll cast Stell it. But yes, that's a different thing, but you have traps for that. But they'll try to be like, oh, I'm just going to run over the Dark Wall. And you'll be like, no, you have to attack the Marauding Captain first because he's a warrior. He's a warrior. So it gives you a little bit extra insurance policy on your Dark Wall and your Sound Swordsman. Uh, so you could run it either way. Really, there's no yet you know problems with it. You could run three Marauding Captains and two Goblinburgs, or you can run triple Marauding Cap, triple Marauding Captain, a double Marauding Captain, and two, triple Goblinburg if you wanted to. It's up to you, but I'm telling you, once you play around with this deck long enough, like I have for two months, you'll find out why Marauding Captain is MVP in this deck, <laughs> which I found amazingly cool. But triple Goblinburg and triple Marauding, uh, double. Triple Marauding Captain and Double Goblinburg is all you really need it. You can recycle these guys from Warrior Returning Alive. Next, we run Double Honest in the deck. And you may be saying, Seto, why are you running Honest in a deck? Uh, you got Earth, you got Dark, why is that? Aha, my friend, what did I say about these guys? The Silent Swordsman archetype, as a whole, these are all light monsters. Okay? The all lights. Light, 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 light. If this guy has lowest attack and they try to run over by battle or you're trying to run over something they have, who do you call? You call Honest. And people don't expect Honest in 2017, I have found out. So what you can be doing is you'd be like, oh, I got that uh, that little Silent Paladin, wherever she's at. I can't find her at the moment. Silent Paladin. Oh, you know, bring her out, get my search, you know, for whatever I need. Oh, I'm, I'm going to attack your monster. What? Honest? Run over the monster? Cool. So, Honest gives you protection, and if they try to run over your Silent Swordsman so they can activate a spell, you'd be like, uh, no, Honest. Have an Honest. So, <laughs> Honest is good because one of your main combos in the deck are light, it's a light archetype, and oh, um, works good with Koga as well. What can I say? And it also works out with Neos Alias. So, if you really wanted to get funky, you have Neos Alias with Honest as well. You have enough white attributes where I feel comfortable running the two double honest in the deck. It really pays off. Try it. Try it. I'm telling you. Uh, next we run triple silent sword slash. 
This gives you 1500 attack for any level monster on the field. So if you have this guy out, he'll be 25 attack when you activate this as a quick play spell. When it's in the graveyard, you can banish it from your graveyard to add one silent swordsman um, from your deck to your hand. And that is the reason why we run two foolish barrier of belongings here. Because what you can do to search this guy out, or search him out, depending upon your hand, mind you, like I said earlier, depending upon your hand, you're going to search him most of the time, him a good sometimes as well, depending upon your hand. But you go foolish burial, send this card to the graveyard, okay, it goes to the graveyard, I banish it from the graveyard, add silent swordsman to my hand, and now I can do my combo player setting up my board. And also, you can use this protection as well because it won't be dead. So you can set it. If they try to attack it, it's like another mini honest. Flip it up. Gains 15 attack. Uh, 1,500 attack. Okay. Goes to the graveyard. On my turn now, I can banish it. Add a level monster to my hand. I can use it as attack and defense. It's an amazing card. And you can use Foolish Burial Belongings to send it to the graveyard to be a road at target. So these... This right here is the reason I invested in the deck, because this this works. It's a Rota, makes, this makes this a Rota, this is already a Rota, this is also a Honest, and can be offensive defensively, and it's a quick play spell to boot. Great card. So this little combo right here works well. You can send this to the graveyard, get a search off. And this is already good because it's a Searcher, uh, an Honest, because you get 1,500 attack, and it can be a Rota when it's in gra Grave. So those are your spell lineups right there. For the Silent Swordsman archetype, uh, we have, and that's, by the way, if you don't know what that's called, it's called Silent Sword Slash. Next, we have your three Mass Change. Okay, Mass Change, bring out Dark Law, bring out Koga, bring out Enki, bring out Acid. Simple as that. You search it through um, Shadow Mist or draw on it, hard draw. Next, one E Call, one Rota. I know a lot of people say I should run double E Call, but Believe me, once you play this deck, I may want to bump uh, this up to double E-Call and one Rota, but this is not an E-Hero deck. This is a Silent Swordsman deck, so Rota is better, E-Call is okay. So you can run double E-Call if you want to by cutting something out of the deck, or believe me, you'll find yourself being perfectly fine with one Rota and one E-Call. I, I, I haven't wanted to bump it up. I would like to, but it's not necessary. Next card that's really important to the deck because it gives you an ability to add materials and resources back to your hand is the warrior returning alive. You add one warrior monster from your graveyard to your hand. Simple as that. You can reuse your Silent Swordsmen's, your Shadow Mist, your Goblinbergs, your Marauding Captains to get more special summonings going to get more draw power and search power in your deck. The deck has an insane amount of draw and search power. Next, we have your Instant Fusion for your Noden to make great four plays. Even when Link Summoning comes out, this is perfectly fine because if they destroy your Dark Wall, you can make a Rank 4 play with this. It's nice. As long as Noden's around, run this. Upstart Goblin for draw power. Regeki for blowing up the board. Make it a 39 card deck. Blow up your board. Attack with your monsters. Simple as that. Non-targeting removal. Even for Link's. Next, I run two Stormy Mirror Force. You could run regular Mirror Force, but I've been really liking Stormy Mirror Force when I've been hypothetically playing against Link monsters with my friends, just like, let's. if this was a Link monster, how would you get over it if it had this effect? And I really like the Storming Mirror Force. You could run Quaking, but Quaking's not going to be really useful with, uh, with Link monsters coming out, so two Storming Mirror Force. And then Double Strike and a Warning. So two Solemn Strikes and a Warning for protection. On to the extra deck, guys. You run your... Double Dark Law, amazing card. You guys should know what this does. It's a macro cosmos that whips cards out of your hand, your opponent's hand. Enki for getting over big things. Acid for blowing up back row. And Koga for OTKs. Then you have the Utopia package. Simple as that. S39 Utopia for just going over things and getting around problems. You have Castel 101, Giant Hand for protection, Abyss Dweller. Gaga Ga Samurai for protection of whatever monsters you have on the field at the time. Your 101 and your 103 and your Noden. So Noden for your instant fusion play to go into rank four plays. But that I know what I've been very quickly, guys. My camera is about to die again, sadly. <laughs> but I hope you guys all enjoyed this deck profile. It is a very, very fun deck to play, I would have to say, guys. Um, I know I went very quickly through it, but it's it's such a powerful deck. 
Like once you play this deck and you go back and like test it and test it, you'll find out that this deck is fairly good. I think it could win somebody a locals just for fun. It's such a very powerful deck. Um, I've tested it against a whole bunch of meta decks and it works well. But till next time, take care everybody. Good luck.